Good morning, friends. It's great to be with you this Monday morning. I want to encourage you, grab your hot coffee, grab your hot tea, and let's dive into God's Word together. As we're diving in this morning, we're going to be looking at Acts chapter 14, starting in verse 8. And this is an exciting passage for us to be taking a look at, is we're going to see a wild day in Lystra. As Paul and Barnabas are going about their missionary journey, Paul's finishing up his first missionary trip, and we're going to see some crazy things happening. That's not, I don't know any way to describe it. It's uh, just a crazy day. So here we go. We're going to be looking at this as we're diving in. I want to encourage you, if you're just now finding us on Facebook, I want to encourage you to follow Trinity Fellowship. That way you can be notified when we go live on BibleCast. And if you're with us on any of the other platforms, we're glad you're here this morning. As always, if you have any prayer requests, please type those in to the comments section there. When you see one come across, let's be sure to pray for each other. Or you can always email us at biblecast at tfc.org. Okay, here we go. Acts chapter 14, picking up the story in verse 8. It says this, In Lystra, Paul and Barnabas encountered a man who from birth had never walked, for he was crippled in his feet. He listened carefully to Paul as he preached. All of a sudden, Paul discerned that this man had faith in his heart to be healed. Now, this is an interesting story here, and we, we recognize what's happening. is Paul's preaching. He's just preaching. There's a man that's in the city. Paul was obviously in the city square. This was a man who had been crippled from birth. And he's sitting there, and he's observing what Paul is saying. Paul's preaching about Jesus. He's talking about God. He's talking about the ministry of Jesus, probably describing some of the miracles that happened and followed Jesus along the way. And Paul could discern, he could see that this man who was crippled from birth was having faith. He had faith beginning to come in his heart. Now this story sometimes gets misconstrued to think that the man had enough faith. Notice it doesn't say that. One of the things we have to always be aware of when we're thinking about healing and any sort of thing that happens in, in Christianity, anything that God does, you know, it's not a matter of how much faith we have. Jesus himself said, if you have just as much faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be thrown into the sea and it'll happen. So it's not about how much faith, it's the fact that he had faith. It was just that small opening in his heart. Paul was able to perceive, hey, this man's getting this. He's having a hope. There's something awakening within him. He's seeing something in Jesus, and he had faith to be healed. So Paul shouted, you, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, stand up on your feet. The man instantly jumped to his feet, stood for the first time in his life, and walked. When the crowd saw the miracle Paul had done, they shouted in their own language, the gods have come down to us as men. They addressed Barnabas as Zeus and Paul as Hermes because he was the spokesman. Now, this is where the wildness begins. Now, these people had never experienced anything like this. This is the first time the gospel has been preached to them. This is the first time they've ever seen anything like this or heard anything like this. So as Paul and Barnabas are, are preaching and just talking about how awesome Jesus is and this man gets healed, they immediately put it into their own paradigm. They immediately are trying to process what's happening. You know, it's, it's classic human nature. When we see something that we've never seen before, we try to recognize it. We try to put it in some sort of a pattern that we can process. It's the very reason. It's, it's how our brains are wired. It's why when you can look up on a cloudy day and, you know, look at clouds floating by and think, you know, that's a turtle riding a horse. You know, you, you, our, our minds want to make sense out of something that we're seeing that we've not processed before. And that's what's happening here. They, they see this man get healed. They've never seen anything like it. And so all they know how to do is put it into their pagan system. They put it in their pagan gods. And they get so excited, they start talking in their own language, meaning that Paul and Barnabas don't understand what's being said. They, they don't understand what's going on. They, they can understand there's excitement. A man just got healed, a man who's been crippled since birth, who's been in the same city square every day for as long as anybody can remember. And now all of a sudden, that he's been healed. And so they're assigning to Paul and Barnabas these Greek gods. It says, so now outside the city stood the temple of Zeus. The priest of the temple, in order to honor Paul and Barnabas, brought bulls with wreaths of flowers draped on them to the gates of the courtyard where they were staying. The crowds clamored to offer them as sacrifices to the apostles. He even brought flower wreaths as crowns to place on their heads. Now, again, you can see what's happening here. Paul and Barnabas are being honored as Greek gods, and they're about to offer a sacrifice a bull to them, and they're putting crowns up on their heads. When the apostles understood what was happening, they were mortified 
and tore their clothes as a sign of dismay. They rushed into the crowd and shouted, People, what are you doing? We are only weak human beings like everyone else. This is why we've come to tell you the good news, so that you would turn away from these worthless myths and turn to the living God. He is the creator of all things, the earth, the heavens, the sea, and everything they contain. Now this reference here to the creator of all things, the earth, the heavens, the sea, and everything they contain, they're going right after the Greek mythology. You know, the Greeks believed in the Greek mythology had gods over all these different things. And Paul and Barnabas are just trying to say, no, 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 there's only one God. There's only one God. He sent his son and they're preaching the good news to him. They're trying to explain to him the, the goodness of who God is and that they're just humans and that they can give away all of those myths. You don't have to follow that stuff anymore. But you can go about and go after God and perceive Him yourself. You know, this is so important because when we look at our culture, you know, our culture is a little bit different, obviously, than the Greek culture, but we still have gods that are worshiped. You know, the God of science, I think, gets worshiped in our culture. Money gets worshiped in our culture. All of these different kinds of things that our culture goes after and pursues and holds up as an idol. Really, an idol is anything that gets more attention, more affection, more uh, love than God gets. That's anything we put in front of God. And so when we recognize that in our own culture, we might have our own gods. We might have the own, our own temples that are set up <clears throat> outside the city gates. Things that uh, get our attention that should, that, that should not. And yet we have to recognize, we have to recenter. And I think that's part of what God wants us to do this morning. To recenter and recognize, no, God's the creator of all things. He's the creator of the earth, the heavens, the sea, and everything they contain. He's the creator of all. And we can submit to Him this morning. We can let Him make sure that He has preeminence in our hearts, that He is what we are after. We're not pursuing our career over God. We're not pursuing money over our relationship with Him. We're not pursuing a relationship with somebody else over our relationship with God. He has to be the primary thing in our hearts. Let's continue. It says, in previous generations, God allowed the nations to pursue their own ways, yet He never left Himself without clear evidence of His goodness. For He blesses us with rain from heaven and seasons of fruitful harvest, and He nourishes us with food to meet our needs. He satisfies our lives, and euphoria fills our hearts. So there, he's just, this is who God is. God takes care of everything that we need. He is our God and our provider. It says, even after saying these things, they were barely able to restrain the people from offering sacrifices to them. All right, so now we're, we're here and Paul and Barnabas, are, they finally got the crowd under control. They finally got them somewhere. They're like, okay, stop, you know, don't offer sacrifices. Just learn. Let's listen and see what God's doing. And now the story's about to change. It says, some of the Jews who had opposed Paul and Barnabas in Antioch and Iconium, Attended, I'm sorry, arrived and stirred up the crowd against them. They stoned Paul and dragged his body outside the city and left him for dead. Now, this is another crazy twist in this wild day in this city. The Jews came, they didn't like what Paul and Barnabas were saying, and they saw that the crowd was on the edge. They saw that a crowd was all stirred up in a fury. And so, what they did is they just continued to stoke that fire. And then they got to where they could stone Paul, and he got stoned. They picked up big rocks. They threw them at him. They thought he was dead. They drug him outside the city and left him there to die. When the believers encircled Paul's body, he miraculously stood up. Paul stood up immediately and went back into the city. The next day, he left with Barnabas for Derby. And this is just, again, this is the end of the wild day. So this day started out as a crazy day, and it ended as a crazy day with the miraculous, almost resurrection, really. We don't know that he was dead, but he was obviously very badly injured, and he just sprung up, sprung up to his feet, and went right back into the city. And then uh, we'll pick up that story there tomorrow. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would come and you would fill us. Let that same life that brought that crippled man to his feet, the same life that re-energized Paul and got him back up on his feet to go on and do what he was called to do. God, let that same power and authority work through us today. We submit ourselves to you. We're thankful for who you are. And Holy Spirit, we acknowledge that we need you in everything that we're doing as we're going to school, as we're going to work. All the things that you've called us to do today, God, let us be empowered by you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we love you guys. We love you. Have an amazing day. God bless.